Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 13, introduction to arrays, number 19, current index. This app also allows the user to scroll through individual items in the array. In order to keep track of which index we are currently viewing, our application will need a global variable that stores the current index. I think that's a pretty big hint on what we're gonna to have to do today. In coming exercises, we'll want our global index to change. Make sure your code references your global index rather than fixed values. We have a do this, create a global variable that will be used to keep track of the current index in the array, set this variable to zero. Update set text, which displays the words to show your first favorite thing using the global index variable instead of a hard coded number. Update set text, which displays the current item number to use the global index variable instead of a hard coded number. We have a hint right here. Since arrays are zero index, you will have to add one to your index to generate the correct value to display. Note, neither of these outputs will be able to change yet. Don't worry, we'll be taking care of those in the upcoming exercises. What does that mean? That just means if I hit run, next and last do not work. So what pops up is just Chevy Volt, one of three. When we get done updating our code, when I hit run, it should look exactly like this. We should have Chevy Volt displayed here and the number one of three in our tracker, but we won't be able to go to anything else. Sounds pretty fun. Well, how are we gonna do this? I think the first thing we're gonna to need to do is to create a global variable, and this is going to track on our array tracker, wherever we're at. So the user knows if we're at one of 20, two of 200, or three of 3 million. Where do I wanna put that variable? Since it's a global variable and I want things to use it from here on out, I'm gonna to wanna to put it pretty high. I know it's not gonna really uh, do anything with my favorite things or append items. I think I can put it just below that. And what's this variable going to be? Well, they want the current index. So I'm just do a current index and I want this set to zero. That means the first time around when we hit run, it should be set to zero. When we go to our next or last, then it should update to whatever we're on. So when it goes to my first thing, the Chevy Volt, that should say one of three up here. Well, how am I gonna get that to display? Well, down here, it says set the text area, and that's my text area right here, to favorite thing zero. This is hard coded in, and we don't want it hard coded in. We want this to be able to change. What I wanna do is take that zero away and I think I want to replace it with my variable that I created. That means every time favorite thing is going to get called, it's going to look up to this variable to see where we're at. That means we don't have to write favorite thing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can just add stuff and then call to this current index here. Let's take away this zero and put current index. Let's hit run and just see what happens here. This should set to zero, which should display my Chevy Volt. Run, Chevy Volt. Let's set this to one real quick. Let's test our hypothesis. This should come up video games now. Reset, run, video games. You'll notice no matter what index I call though, I'm still getting one of three. Why is that happening? We keep track of things one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see here I have Chevy Volt Video Games Pizza. That is three things. That's how we count regularly. Indexes, though, you have to remember, start at zero. That means I'm going to have to add a plus one to something somewhere because I need it to go from zero to one. So we're always correct. Where do I think I want to put that? 
Well, down here I have one of, and that's hard coded in, and that's not what I need. I know I need the word of there because I still need that. But before that, I think what I can do is I can call to my current index here, see where it's at, and output or display this down here. Let's just put current index in right here. That means that's going to call up to my index. But again, this isn't the right number. Chevy Volt isn't zero, it's one. So we need to put a plus one here. What I did was just create a string. So I'm going to have to add a plus in between there. That means whenever the array tracker, that's this text right here, is called, it's going to do whatever the current index is plus one. Why plus one? We count one, two, three, four, five. That's how we display how arrays are indexed are zero, one, two, three, four. We have to compensate for that zero, so we add plus one. This means nothing is hard coded in. We can add as little or as much as we want. And because of our last lesson with our dot length, and now with our current index variable, nothing is set. That means we can add, subtract, whatever we want. And it makes our program a lot easier to work with. This is all a good hypothesis. Let's test it. When I hit run, Chevy Volt should come up and it should say one of three. Chevy Volt, one of three. Let's set our current index here to one. Let's see what pops up. Video games. So zero, one, we have our current index here. And look, our counter went up. So our index is one. This is actually our second thing on our list here, and it's now displaying two of three. I think our code's working pretty good here. Looking back up here at our do this, we created a global variable, set it to zero. We updated set text here. So we displayed what our favorite thing was using the global variable. Down here, we change favorite thing from zero index to the current index or our variable. And then finally, we updated set text, which displays the current item to use the global variable instead of a hard coded number. We use whatever the current index is plus one because indexes are starting at zero. That means we're displaying the correct number along with what's in our array. That was pretty fun, kids. I think that's all we had to do for this lesson. Let's hit finish and see if code.org wants anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I will see you on the next lesson.